Every single shot you'll see in this video, including all these right now, are recorded on the DJI Air 3 in active track mode, meaning fully autonomous tracking mode. I've been using it over the past month or so, so I've got a pretty good idea on where it works really well and where it, it, uh, it, it finds a lot of trees. And, shrubs and flowers and more trees and, and all sorts of stuff. But I'm going to show you how to get these sort of shots no matter where you live in the world and how to avoid this sort of thing from happening. With that, let's go ahead and dive right on into it, starting off with the aircraft itself. This is the Air 3 and it's got a couple major hardware changes on it that make it really interesting for active track scenarios. In this definition, active track means that it's following me fully autonomously, albeit with one of the controllers with me. So the first thing to understand about active track is it's going to use the new obstacle avoidance sensors. And there are four core sensors that are being utilized here. Uh, there's two on the front there. These are angled off the side. So if you look at it straight down like this, you'll see they're like this. That means it gives them basically both frontwards as well as side coverage. And then there are two more on the rear here doing the exact same thing, angled at the side, giving it full coverage 360 degrees, both side, front, back, as well as up. And then on the bottom, there are additional sensors here as well as there that go ahead and measure ground detection, how high it is off the ground. Now what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to walk you through a couple different course scenarios. So with all that background, let's get right into the normal test course I have for all drones. And then I'm going to take you to a bunch of different tracking scenarios that I've had over the last month to kind of like walk through how to get the best possible footage out of it. Let's start off with this on my normal routing course. So with ActiTrack, that's DJI's follow me technology, I can go ahead and just simply highlight myself like that. Uh, and then there's three different options. I'm going to choose ActiTrack and then you'll see that there's a package on my map. I can choose where I want it to be, behind me, off to the side, etc. We're going to start off behind me and then we'll bail it out to the right through the trees and have some fun with that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and choose go so that locks it into place. Also this message you see in the top left hand corner there, it comes every 10 seconds. It's a bug, DJI knows about it, it's for European users. I'm in Europe, sorry, can't do anything about that. Uh, now it is important to note that there's two core settings when it comes to obstacle avoidance. You do need to go up in the upper right hand corner, go to safety, and then make sure that obstacle avoidance bypass is turned on. There's also the nifty option that you see right there. That's basically a little bit riskier option. It'll wait to the last second to make a turn. Uh, I'm not gonna use that here. We're just gonna kind of go with the, the straight and simple one. Uh, also down below, there's display radar map that'll show me the obstacles as we get close to them. One option I forgot to mention while I was out there is the subject scanning option that you see right there. When you enable that, it will automatically detect the subject so you don't have to draw a box around them. With that, I have to remember to press the record button because I almost always forget. I'm going to bring it down a little bit because I want it to basically uh, kind of fall in right behind me here. We're going to use the main lens for now, but we will jump into the tele lens in a little bit. So let's get rolling. Oh, and a quick note that anytime you see the overlays on the screen, that is the screen recording on these units. It is a much lower resolution screen recording. I will switch back and forth to the high res footage here and there, but this is mostly about showing you how ActiTrack works and not about the end state footage, which is really stunning in pretty much every case. Step on in here. What we're gonna do in a little, in a minute, I got some people, I don't know, a few hundred meters up ahead there, four or 500 meters. We're gonna go ahead and Oh, come on, little buddy. You can do this. It's already lost me. Well, that didn't take very long. I mean, it's still going. Now, obviously, that didn't, that didn't work out super well. Uh, this, this failed faster than any other past drone, but this is also a super tricky section. And I had used it in other more wide open areas, so I figured, you know what, I'll give it another shot, and I reset back to the beginning and tried again. Oh, and then here's a closer look at how I mount it on my bike. I've got a whole separate video on that, by the way, up in the corner, uh, so check that out. Sometimes I also just use a carabiner clip. Uh, you can see in some of the mountain biking clips as well. Now, generally speaking, there's a bit of a limit of how fast it'll go when it gets close to trees. You see it's pulling back right now, so basically it's trying to avoid the tree situation right here. Uh, and as it gets closer to the objects, either the ground or trees, it slows down. And this is something the Skydio doesn't do, but DJI drones, I think a couple meters, and you see that orange popping up on the, the screen right there. Uh, that means it's just getting too close to objects and it doesn't really like to be there. Now you can see it's really just struggling right here. And in particular, because it's so close to the trees in the ground, when it gets within a couple meters of one of those things, it'll slow down to essentially like a walking pace. So I tell it to go and track me off for the right hand side instead. You can see that whole area is clear of that field over there. So that should allow it to be clear of trees while still tracking me. I'm fast forwarding the footage here because of, it just didn't want to do that. Uh, so eventually I stopped it and I manually stuck it out there and then I started tracking again. It doesn't want to be there. Okay. Now it's going to have to deal with the trees itself then. It's on you, dude. You figure yourself out. 
Don't hit those tree branches. Now this is where I would normally use the three by lens, but you're just not in a good spot, dude. You're really slow. I mean, I'm going like two miles an hour here. Once you catch up, come over here. Okay, so at this point, I'm gonna toss it into the 3X telephoto lens. Uh, on the Air 3, there are two lenses. There is a main lens, that's the bottom one that you see right there, and then the telephoto lens in the top there. And that's awesome for ActorTrack, because one, it gets you just a cooler angle in most cases, uh, and kind of a better sort of scenario there, but two, it increases the safety of the drone, of you, of people around you, because you can put it further away from the subject, uh, quite a bit further away, and still get effectively the same or even a better shot. I'm now on the 3X lens, it sees me as a person object there we go i choose the right side i press go i don't forget to press record again and now i'm clear of people there we go and now it's out there in a safer spot and you can see it's there oh man dude, dude i'm gonna have grandmas passing me here soon it's not a good place for you to be like that i'm literally gonna get passed by grandma if the thing does not plunk into a tree first Oh, that's really close. That's astounding the close to that tree. Yet it also struggled here as well. I'm trying to like consolidate a long period of failures over and over again so you don't have to like painstakingly sit through this. See, here comes grandma. Okay, so for this tree section, solid fail. Now to be fair, it wasn't like an entire fail because it's still alive, which is something that the rest of its little siblings cannot say. Uh, every other drone from DJI has crashed on this course at some point. Uh, this one did not crash, so that's positive. We'll just move on from that into an area that's a little more open. Uh, you can see here, I've got it like sped up a bit because it's actually working just fine. So I've got it up fairly high, I've got it open, uh, no problems at all until it gets to like the last section, the promised land and it, it, it... We're a little close to that tree. Oh, it, the tree failed it. I reset it now into the area that's wide open. This section is a cool option which is called POI. So basically now I can do POI. I'm gonna speed up a fair bit here and it'll just go around me. So watch this, as I go along, using active track, it'll do loops around me. I would normally do this way faster, but I just don't want my phone to break and end up under my tire and then have an angry phone and an angry goose. Now, as you can see by those giant ass windmills here, uh, it is pretty darn windy out today. I'm guessing about 30, 40 kilometers an hour wind. So you'll notice how that drone in certain sections as it's going around, goes faster or slower. So after off-roading for a bit, I finally got up to a uh, road there where I could do this, and in particular, toss it into the three by lens to really show you what's potentially possible here uh, at speed with a tailwind, because there is quite a bit of wind right now in this area. Okay, this this right here, what you're about to see, so I'm gonna hit that fence. Oh, you need to complete the loop. Get your, get your ass back around there. Do not wimp out like that. This is awesome, come on. You're supposed to be doing loopy loops. Go, birds. Come on, crow. I'm not afraid of you. Now I'm basically beyond the speed of what I want. And here I can go into sport mode because of the fact there's nothing here to hit yet. But otherwise in sport mode, it doesn't avoid obstacles. And that's a really important thing to understand. Uh, people often ask, why can't you just toss into sport mode? Because sport, it, we think it'd be for sports, but no, no, no. Sport mode in DJI lingo means basically the mode to have like be sporty with the drone. Uh, so that it removes all obstacle avoidance and allows you to go a heck of a lot faster. Uh, so that's great for scenarios like this where there's nothing around for me to hit. But now that I got that tree line coming up there, I'm gonna toss it back into normal mode so that re-enables obstacle avoidance. Good job, little buddy. You got it. Okay, now. The question is, will it be able to thread the needle and complete a rotation around this tree? That's what matters. It doesn't seem to want to thread any needle right now, which is smarter than its Mavic 3 brother was. I'll slow down for a second. Go a little faster for it, you gotta pull that off. So it's gotta shoot the gap on the trees. Oh, good job, little buddy. Oh, do not back into that big old trunk. You will lose. No, I couldn't, it got a little skittish. Yep, YOLO. There we go, good job, go around it. Don't lose me, don't lose me, don't lose me. Come on, come on, come on. I'll slow down, I'll give it a chance. There we go, there's still tree branches there. Now I essentially had to stop entirely and eventually it did catch up to me. And we're only like halfway through the normal test here. 
I'm just going to skip the rest of the test. I think you've got the feel for it at this point. Uh, the rest of it, it lost me even more because there's more trees and whatnot. Instead, let's talk about where this does really well. So here I am up in the mountains and I've got a following us uh, using active track mode. And this is a great snare. There's a couple of trees around that I'm just kind of passing into the clearing now. And it's doing great. Like I can do anything I want here because there's nothing to run into. Uh, and it's just awesome for this. I can lower the shot down. Uh, in this case, you see, I go ahead and put it off to the left. So I get a different angle there. Uh, and I follow that for a while. This is a really long section of gravel. So eventually I stick it in front of me as well. These are the scenarios that ActiveTrack on DJI products are made for versus the previous test is better for Skydio where there's just more things to avoid. Which isn't to say that DJI is bad at obstacle avoidance. This is definitely improving at obstacle avoidance. Over the past month, it has not hit anything yet. And I would say I tried fairly hard to hit things. Uh, check out this section right here where I'm mountain biking. This is yesterday actually. Um, so I was going up, I put it in front of me. So it's cool, you can see the red there. It's it's kind of all over the place. It is going uphill. I'm going uphill, so it is tracking properly uphill and downhill. I do find it a little bit slow to track going up. It just kind of tends to lag a bit. But watch as it like slalom weaves between some poles here. Wait for a second, here it comes. Uh, you'd be like, whoa, that's, that's a little bit spicy. Uh, but you can see the first pull off the side there, no big deal there. Uh, but then there's some ski nets coming up. You can see one right there. Normally these would be ski runs. They have big nets there so people don't go flying off the edge. But it is tracking around this. It's doing a pretty good job of this. Now I'm gonna show you one of the tricks that I have for getting cool shots. And the thing to keep in mind about Active Track is that most people aren't gonna publish a 20 or 30 minute long video of just following you. Instead, you're gonna use little snippets of this as B-roll and something else. So watch what I'm gonna do here. I'm basically grabbing the controller and I'm changing the direction it's following from the front to the back. Uh, and the way the DJI products work is it takes a moment for it to do that. You have to start moving first. So as I start pedaling here, you'll see it'll slowly shift around behind me. Uh, and you can use this trick if you can do it really slightly uh, to basically create these kind of angles as it goes around. Uh, also not really sure why the sheep were surprised. This is like the fourth pass I passed back them and they're like, whoa, where'd this guy come from? Uh, there's all sorts of livestock in this area and they just kind of hang out. And normally they're not, they don't really care about mountain bikers or, or runners or cyclists, but uh, in this case they did, uh, but you can see this is the cool shot here. And again, as I go downhill, you can see me do the exact same thing again. I uh, had it basically set for the front and now I'm setting up for the back and it's creating this sweeping shot that it kind of goes ahead and opens up the entire vista in front of me uh, and it follows along. And you know, I'm not going super fast right now, but it is holding on. Uh, if I was on my road bike, it's gonna struggle a bit more at some of these speeds, but right here, mountain biking, no real issues. Now let's talk about recovery, how well it recovers after it loses you. So check this out right here. I'm on the 3X lens up in the mountains, cruising along, I'm not going that fast. I'm going uphill, uh, but it's going lower than I wanted to. And right now it gets behind this little like hut thing right there, but it's still tracking, it recovered me. That's impressive. I mean, now it shouldn't have been there in the first place. It should have ideally raised its altitude, uh, but hey, it did it. Here's another example of recovery. So I'm going along here, I'm pedaling. It's just at the edge there. This is where Scadio would automatically rise up a little bit, but the DJI product's like, hey, you set me for this altitude, I'm gonna keep this altitude. Uh, and it's holding on, like this is where it is. This is low uh, at dusk, so basically it's actually much darker than you think. It loses me up, but it gets me back again, holy moly. And it's still going, still going, still going. And then in just a second here, it's like, oh, no, oh, oh, oh yeah. Uh, and again, if I was in full daylight, it might have had a better chance of uh, following me. But in this case, this was essentially at sunset, really low colors. Before we talk about boats and cars briefly, uh, there's one message that's notable for European users. And it's this message right there. Uh, so that message tells you that the aircraft cannot be more than 50 meters away from you when it's in tracking. This is new to DJI products with the Air 3. This was never there in the past. Uh, and it's sort of a bummer because with the zoom lens, that means you have to be within 50 meters. And I found that DJI's definition of 50 meters is iffy at best and not in your favor. So um, a lot of times I found that, you know, right here, it's, it's definitely more than 50 meters, but uh, in some cases I found that I could be at like clearly only about 30 meters away and it's like, no, you're too far. When that happens, you simply need to bring the drone closer to you or you go closer to it uh, until you're within range and then you can go ahead and do whatever it is that you want to do. Now you've probably seen in this video that I've done some tracking from the front, but I just want to put like a finer point on that. Uh, so you can see here, I've got it set for uh, front left. I find in general setting up for front left or front right, I uh, gets better angles and just straight head on. I don't know why, it just tends to do a better job tracking there. So you can see I've set it for the front left there. Uh, and the only challenge with DJI products is that it tends to need a lower speed for front tracking. You can see it's slowly 
working its way behind me. As I mentioned earlier on, when it has challenges tracking, it defaults to the safe zone of behind me. You can see it's done that here. It's still a cool shot, it's just not the shot I asked for. Now, in case you're wondering what happens when it does lose you permanently, you'll see this right here, what's gonna happen as I go behind these trees. Again, I was, just, I was really trying to get really finicky with the altitude on this, uh, and it loses me, and basically the aircraft will just stop, and it'll hang out there, and it's got that little box saying like, person was here, not here anymore. You can then manually take control of that and go from there. Uh, still, let me just show you like, probably one of the better shots that I've got overall. The speed is up here, I found just the right height to be at, uh, and it just cruises along. This is a super cool shot. It would have been better without the power line, but hey, I can't control where they put the power lines. Then I'm gonna go ahead and make the churn here. I'm gonna see if it'll follow me. I it should, I bet it would have followed me better in you know lighter daylight. You can see I make the churn, and then for whatever reason, it loses me right there. I'm actually really surprised it lost me. I think that's more of a light thing on that particular lens and you know, essentially sunset. Uh, but still, it was a super cool shot up until that point. Now, as I mentioned earlier on, it doesn't have to be me on a bicycle or running, whatever the case, tracking. Uh, you can track cars. You can actually see it shows the subject scanning pop up here. I basically stopped because the car is coming around, so I stuck the drone in the air. But you can see that it picks up the car there is an object that I can track. The same is true of boats. I went ahead and I drew a, a little circle around this. You see it notices it as a boat. And then I went ahead and active track this water skier for quite a long time, just following along. I've active tracked many boats here in the Netherlands. Uh, it's super cool. It works really, really well. Uh, and remember, you can do both regular active track where you choose which side to track from, as well as to do POI where you're rotating around it. Uh, keep in mind, with rotating around it, you probably want the speed to be a little bit lower. Uh, otherwise, it'll struggle on the front side to get around something. Okay, so where are we overall with Active Track on the Air 3? Uh, well, it's definitely DJI's best attempt yet, uh, but with some caveats. Uh, the first is, again, as I said earlier on, it's not Skydio, and it's, it's not going to be Skydio. I, I'm not going to change that. The problem is, I'm not convinced, not not convinced, I am pretty sure Scottio is done with consumer drones. Uh, they've been asked multiple times, they keep on saying we'll tell you later on in the year. Uh, when a company says they're going to tell you later on in the year and they've stopped selling consumer drones, it's a pretty good indication they've stopped selling consumer drones. Uh, they're out of stock, etc. They're going to focus on commercial, enterprise, military, etc. Which that's their choice. Um, I think it's a mistake, but that's that's their choice. And unfortunately, DJI does not have a beacon for the drone. So nothing that you can just put on you that's small and waterproof and just keeps that connection going. I, listen, DJI, you love selling accessory products more than any other company in this space. You make us buy new remotes every single drone, it seems like now. Just make me buy an accessory beacon. I will pay hundreds and hundreds of dollars for a stupid accessory beacon that works with at least one of your drones for like some period of time. That's that's what I want. I mean, Scottio sold it, people bought it. So please, that's that's all I'm asking for. Anyways, hopefully that's uh, what you need to make whatever decisions you need to make. Uh, as usual, if you found this video interesting and useful, whack the like button, the subscribe, the ding dong bell, whatever it is. Have a good one.